My god, this team looked disastrous in the game against Leviathan. Sentinels, four world champions, dismissed. Sentinels have failed to qualify for the world championship for the second year in a row and might be on the verge of going out of business entirely. Which is crazy to think about because it feels like just yesterday that Sentinels were the best team in the world, winning tournaments with the biggest brand and the most fans. So when you look back at their recent tournament results, you might be wondering, how did Sentinels possibly fall off so quickly? On April the 18th, 2020, Sentinels officially expanded into the Valorant world. They announced a star-studded roster with former professionals from Counter-Strike, Apex Legends and Overwatch. 2019 OWL MVP Sinatra headlined the roster and I obviously want to play a game I enjoy and helped guide them to victory in multiple early online tournaments including a first place finish in the stage one of the VCT. Sen were in the driver's seat to win Masters 1. But just before the tournament started, disaster struck. Riot announced that star player Jay Sinatra One has been suspended from competing in Valorant. Developer Riot Games has handed the Sentinels player a six-month competitive ban. For failure to cooperate with Riot after allegations from his ex, the community was shocked to hear that Sinatra had been suspended from competition and despite technically now being eligible to compete once again, no organization seems willing to facilitate this return and he hasn't competed outside of a brief cameo in the 2023 Challenges qualifiers. But going back to that point, Sintels had a giant hole now in their roster, which they were desperately trying to fill on short notice. But from the heavens, came Tens. Tens' popularity skyrocketed with the release of Valorant as he transitioned into content creator for Cloud9 after a rather lackluster career in CSGO. I was able to blow up through competitive play, my Twitch stream, all my socials. I really just kind of blew up on all the platforms. His flashy plays and raw aim brought tens of thousands of viewers to his Twitch stream. But when the number one team in North America came calling, Tens just couldn't let that type of opportunity go. Cloud9 were happy to loan him out for the event, and Tens officially made his return to competition. Despite having no time at all to build chemistry, Sentinels had no trouble incorporating Tens into their roster. Here comes a dagger with his name on it, but it's gonna be sick. He's gonna get it done, and that's a wrap. 3-0, grand final, Sentinels are the champions. They won the tournament by dropping just one map. After being retired from competition for over three months, Tens made it clear to everyone he had not lost it, as he ended the event with the highest KD. With Tens, Sentinels proved they were a level above the rest of the North American teams, but their next goal was to prove they were the best in the world. With Masters 2 in Reykjavik being held on LAN, this was Sentinels' chance. Could a North American team emerge triumphant at a major esports event in Valorant? It's up to Dapper there. Oh, oh no! What is that? What, the, what the hell was that from Dapper? With postpone as well, Shazam. Oh, over the top. He gets two. Shazam oh. again. He did it yesterday. And here he is once more with the knives. Can Sick find the first player? Yes, he can. There goes Lackia. A right click on the paint shell. Sick nails the clutch. 1v2, no problem at all for him. Oh my god, he gets flash! The team flash! The team flash! Magnum's in the smoke here. Tens oh my god! Oh, Magnum's got no HP! Not like this! Sentinels! They're gonna get the defuse! They've done it! Sentinels are the masters to Reykjavik champions! Not only did Sentinels make NA prowls, but they wiped the floor with the competition, dropping zero maps all tournament long in one of the most dominant victories that we have seen in Valorant. Sentinels were unstoppable, and it seems like no team from any region would ever be able to take them down. Tens delivered by far the best LAN performance of the year, still considered the gold standard of event performance to this day, and still stand as the best debutante event in VCT history. As Tens officially signed on June the 1st, this officially marked the start of his journey. Tens led the team to a third Masters event of the season, looking to complete the hat trick and cement themselves as a potential dynasty roster. I think it's very boring to ask, Who's the favorite to win Berlin? Because it's Sentinels. It's Sentinels. Everyone's got the same answer. It's Sentinels. Between CT and watching that drop down. Shazam is there. Tens. They're all looking for it. No opportunities being found. It's traded out again. Yeah, he's there. It's all on Shazam. And it's over. It's done with. They say when you come for the king, you best not miss. And Envy, they didn't.
but in a massive shock, Sentinels were dethroned by fellow NA team Envy. With the addition of Ye to the roster, Envy finally had the firepower to match the top teams. Some also blamed this on Sentinels lacking a coach or even an analyst to assist them. Indeed, in-game leader Shazam, who was catching heat after their recent defeat, admitted in an interview that they were indeed missing the extra set of eyes to spot key information the players might have missed. Sentinels finally pulled the trigger. They made a last-minute move to acquire FaZe Clan's Raucus on loan as their coach, hoping this would give them the strength to bounce back heading into VCT Champions. And it all comes down to this 12 to 11, one team beckoning for greatness, and they're gonna flash it! Yeah, no way! way! No yes, way! Destroys three through the smoke! Heartbreak now for Sentinels! And it's all down to Dapper and Sick! Sick fighting with everything, but it is not enough! It's your time to shine right about now. It's all on you, buddy. Surrounded on all fronts. It's over! It's done with! Crew against all of our expectations, against all odds! But unfortunately for Sentinels, they continue to flounder losing two games in pool play and were quickly eliminated before even making it to the bracket. Sentinels were typically lacking in the strategic department and they'd left it way too late to acquire a coach to make a significant impact. After dominating the start of the year, a devastating way to finish the season. Going into 2022, Sentinels were looking for a fresh start, but the year started off rocky as the team were not willing to pay the necessary buyout to get Raucus on full time. To make matters worse, Sentinels lost back-to-back -back matches in the playoffs to place only top eight. With this, Sentinels had no choice but to break the team up. Zoms was moved to the bench to make way for Kan Pecky, an up-and-coming flex player and good friend of Tens. They were also able to bring Coach Raucus back into the mix, finally giving them the facilities to do some damage for the rest of the year. But this new look Sentinels got off to another shaky start. They were on the verge of not even qualifying for stage two, needing to win four matches in a row to get the job done. It's the trade. Two members are low, but Tens playing it off angle. We'll take it across the finish line for Sentinels. But Sentinels qualified emphatically, winning all four games without dropping a map. But just as things were starting to look better for Sentinels, another curveball was thrown in their direction. Tens and Sick were both unable to play in crucial matches during Stage 2. Tens due to illness, something of a recurring theme, and Sick due to a family emergency. Coach Raucus and analyst Danny stepped up to the plate, but they lost all five games and once again failed to qualify for Masters. This was rock bottom for Sentinels, so much so that Twitch streamer Shroud came out of retirement to replace Sick in one of the wildest roster moves in history. Pokimane even joined in on the action, poking fun at Sentinels' lack of victories in 2022. A once feared powerhouse team, now the laughing stock of the Valorant community. They had one more chance at redemption at the last chance qualifier. If they failed to make it to the biggest event of the season, this surely meant the end of the road for this Sentinels team, as the VCT transitioned to a partnered league for 2023. As fate would have it, Sentinels matched up against rivals 100 Thieves in the loser's bracket quarterfinals. Winning a big game like this would give any team the momentum they needed to start to make a run. No, no challenge yet. Save Son it. of a gun, they've done it again. Save and they're not done yet. Zeus is still healthy. So many targets before and Shaz and Dapper to keep it back and no! They're gonna get the defuse! We had five days to practice before 100 Thieves. We didn't practice. Tyson got really, really sick. Unlucky. Sentinels were undeniably the best team in the world for a time in 2021, and undeniably the most clouted team in the world in 22. Tens, Shroud, even bringing Tarek on as a content creator. Now it was time to be both at the same time. After all their failures in 2022, Sentinels knew they had to be ruthless and capitalize on the partnership spot granted to them by Riot, largely due to their immense fan base. After spending over two years on Sentinels, team captain Shazam was cut from the roster without, from his perspective, being told personally. I just found out with you guys. Three years on a team and I find out like this. This sparked a war on Twitter.com between Shazam and CEO Rob Moore. 
with Shazam revealing that he believed he was personally guaranteed a spot if he agreed to bring Shroud onto the team the previous year. Questionable management decides Sentinels weren't messing around, as they acquired former Exet coach Psycho to build the roster. He brought in Zekin and Def from Exet, pairing them with reigning world champions Sassy and Pancada, Brazilian players from Loud. These four players, along with Tens, had the makings of an S tier team in 2023. Sentinels arrived at the single elimination lock in event in Sao Paulo with the hardest possible draw. Eventual champions Fnatic, who only lost three series the entire season. What a miracle play, what a miracle performance, but Leo, he might just end it. Left down to the 1v1 second, he has to kill him and he won't do it. The hopes and dreams ended in a flash. And it is going to be a long term project. Sentinels are aiming for champs at the end of the year, but they have a fan base that is hungry for results and they demand perfection for for sentinels it might take a little bit more time for that team to cook up but of course we're excited to see what that squad could do in the future especially going into the america's league but just three games into the season the community was shook to see that coach psycho was fired from the organization immediately following defeat to leviathan another questionable decision involving ceo rob moore as kaplan stepped up to the head coach role to add to the roster chaos, Tens had contracted a joint infection in his left finger and stepped down from the team with Marv subbed in for their games against Loud and MIBR. You came into this roster as a substitute initially and now a full-time player for the rest of their run. I was watching those games live and it's incredible what he can do and the impact that he could have on controller. Losing a tight 2-1 series to Loud and comfortably beating MIBR was enough to convince Sentinels to keep that existing roster, especially with Tens keen to step away from the team to help Kaide, his now fiance, following her recent leukemia diagnosis. In classic Sentinels fashion though, this was far from the end of the drama. Battered by Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses, Sen had lost faith in their in-game leader Death to move the team forwards. Marv took up the IGL responsibilities, as nobody else wanted to, with Tens returning to the starting team. This new look roster played some of the best Valorant of their season against Crew and Furia, and were just one map win away from securing a miracle spot in the playoffs. Unfortunately, a 2-1 win against Furia wasn't enough when tiebreakers were factored in, and the last chance qualifier was their final shot of making it to any international event requiring qualification that season. The TP's behind them, no one clearing it, Derek wins the trade out, but he's sworn. Everyone on his angle, 8 seconds left, it's impossible, it's not probable, and Sentinels are moving forwards. Despite a promising start to their World Championship qualification dream, knocking out 100 Thieves, defeat to Cloud9 and Leviathan, the team that helped kick off the chaos back in April, spelled the end of Sentinel's season. Their attempt to dominate the fan base and competition had definitively failed. As Sentinels now aim to rebuild their championship winning aspirations, they may have a more daunting task on their hands, staying in business itself. In early July, it was revealed that Sentinels were intending to allow fans to invest in the company. In order to enable this crowdfunding to occur, the org had to reveal company information to the public domain, including an almost $700,000 monthly expenditure on player and content creator salaries. While reports of its potential demise are exaggerated, if the company gets its best outcome, it will still have less than six months of runaway to survive. It needs to cut costs exponentially, today. Sentinels develops the biggest brand and fan base in the world of Valorant, partly thanks to great content and personalities, but also their spell of dominance during 2021. Their attempts to replicate that success have thus far fallen flat on their face, and if major cost-cutting measures are necessary to keep the organization afloat, star talents such as Tens may not be around for too much longer. Sentinels may never rise to glory again.